Hi there, YouTubers. Let's get a little bit closer. Okay, starting a new project. Um, today it'll be a project out of this book, um, a weaver's book of eight shaft patterns from the Friends of Handwoven, edited by Carol Strickler, and I am going to be doing this pattern, which is difficult as the Dickens for you to see on here the way I'm holding it, but this is number 227. Um, I've made it a little bit wider, there's more repeats, but that's okay. You'll get the idea. I'm going to start out by showing you a little bit of how I set up the extra repeats and stuff using Tempo Weave software, and then we'll get into um, threading, putting the warp on the loom and threading it and all that kind of fancy stuff all the way up through lashing and on to the front beam. So let's take a look at what's going on with this project and next thing you should see is a screen from Tempo Weave. It's a real simple one. I'm going to choose straight twill over here for my drawing tool and we're going to just do this with the cursor for now. It goes up like this. It's an eight shaft pattern. There we go. It's basically a two block pattern that is in, um, what's the word I want? A profile draft. And so what I'm going to do is set the warp colors to white for the first four threads and a very light gray for the second four threads. And I'm doing that because the first four threads will represent the A block and the second four threads here will represent the B block within the warp. Now I've also got to set up my tie up for this, which is going to be real simple. The A block will be the first four, so let's set that up as one and five six seven the next one will be two and five six eight next is going to be three and five seven eight and then four six seven eight now the b block tie up will be um, five three, two, one, six, four, two, one, seven, uh, seven, okay, and then eight, yeah, so I've got that right for the sake of just being able to see something right now I'm going to set up a very simple something in the treadling although that's not what I finally want to end up with so I'm going to do a save as project save as And we're going to call it STIRI Strickler 227A, because this will be my first go at it. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do, and here's where we start to really use a feature of Tempo Weave, I want to go into design. And I'm going to do what's called section markings. Let's make this a little larger so you can see it better. So I'm going to mark some sections that I can then use and assemble in, uh, to a more finished product. So section marking and section A would be block A is the first 
four shafts. And I'm going to then section B will be the second four shafts. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Section, yeah, section this is going to be section A. and section B. So you can see here I'm showing section B is sha or yeah, shafts 5 through 8 right there. Okay, so now we've marked those sections. Let's begin to use them. So we'll go into what's called section assembly and we're going to be working with warp se sections. And the way this pattern is set up in the book, you can see that really there's a border section that's on the left and the right. There is a center section, and then there are two intermediate sections. So the first section that I'm going to do is I'm going to add a group that will be the border. I'm going to go down here and I'm going to name, rename it instead of just group. I'm going to call it border. Okay. Now, what is the border consisting of? The border consists of two copies of the A section. So we'll take the A section down to here. And it occurs two times. Then it's the B section, and that occurs two times. Then the A section again, two times. The B section, two times. And finally, the A section, or the A block, again, two times. That is the complete design of the borders. So now we're going to add another group and this I'm going to call the intermediate um, yeah that's his good name intermediate and that consists of the B section 16 times. Then we do one more group, and this one's going to be a longer one. So I'm going to hide these just so we've got more room to work with here. This consists of the A section one time, the B section one time, the A section one time, the B section twice, A section twice, the B section three times, the A section four times, and the B section five times. Oops, that's a six. I had to take it back one. Then it's the same thing in reverse, so now we'll do an A section four times, a B section three times, A four, this should have been a three up here, three, that was a B, so now we need an a section two times, B section two times, and A section once, B section once, and an A section once. So those are the three sections that we are going to assemble into our final pattern. So let's Go up to the file section and save this just so we don't screw anything up. 
And now, let's see if I can remember how to do this. I think the thing to do is to say go and watch what it does. When I say go on this side, let's see what it does over here. It opened up a whole new whiff for me, but you can see it took and redid all of the warp threadings for me over here. Now the problem with this is, and here's this is an issue that I corresponded with the authors of the Tampa Weave program about last week, they have agreed that my suggestion is worthwhile and we'll be implementing this in a future version. Right now, you can only, let's go back. There's the section assembly that we had. Okay. You can only have these sections once. But I want to be able to copy this B section and have another copy of it down way below on, I don't know how to move down. There we go. I want to have another copy of the B section down here. And then I want to take a copy of the border section and put it way down here but below the B section. That functionality is not yet in the Tempo Weave program, the ability to copy a section or a group and reuse it. So let's take you back to where are we here? Oh, there it is. So let's enlarge this thing. And just so you can see what I've been working with, I'm going to go up to Design. Nope. Tools. I'm going to choose Tromp as Writ. Structure only, not color. And we're going to copy that. So now we took all of the threading and put it down here as treadling. And just to make it easier to see, let's change our weft color to a red. And there you can get a little bit better idea of what this pattern would look like. So what I had hoped to do was take this chunk here, this intermediate section, make a copy of it and put it over here to the left and then take a copy of the border which is this part here and put it over on the far side as the border again. As yet that functionally do, functionality does not exist in this part of Tempo Weave. However there is something one can do. One can go into the drawing section in the free area and select all of this and control C to copy and come over to this site and then control V to paste and it left my warp colors wrong but I can then go into copy again Oops, wrong thing. Copy from here over to there. Copy, paste, and we'll go and just move over and change the colors to white. 
and shrink this down so you can see it a little too far shrunken and there you go that's the basic thing so it was this section and this section that I didn't get to copy in the section assembly part that is going to be fixed anyways I've taken this I've already taken this and started working on it at the loom so the next thing I will show you is me doing some of the threading of my heddles and I've gotten about half of them done so far. So that's this part. Now let's take a look at this at the loom as I'm starting to do setup. Okay, gang. So here I am at, I'm in the front of the loom. You're at the back of the loom. And I've got some heddles here that need to be threaded. For this particular part of what I'm doing, I'm working with some threads from block B and I don't think this goes down quite far enough and yeah, you can't see it but so this is shafts four, five, six, seven, and 8 are in block B and my threading pattern will be exactly that 5 6 Seven and eight. So I'm just picking up one thread at a time, putting them through the heddles, and moving them over. So here's the next batch of heddles. Again, picking up one thread at a time. I hope I've got this focused right in. It looks like it to me when I look at the little screen on the camera, but you know, that's such a small screen, you can't be 100% sure. So, anyways, you get the idea of what I'm doing here, and you've seen me do a whole eight threads. Set those aside, we'll kind of move those out of the way. And that's eight threads out of 560, I believe. And right now I'm just marking off on my chart what I've done. Hold this up so you can see it. Um, Everything that's marked off in yellow or green is something that I have actually threaded. This is not threaded. And of course there's a second page to this thing. I'll show you in a second. There's the stuff that's not threaded. The uh, orange lines simply tell me when I've gotten 24 threads done and I tie a uh, little slip knot into it just to keep them semi-organized out here whilst they're over on that side um, waiting for me to finish this put the reed back on and slay the reed so that's this process no point boring you to death with 560 threads worth but we'll do We'll reach over to the far side here and grab a couple more threads, a couple more heddles. There's shaft five. Here's two more for shaft six. Two more for seven. Two more for eight. And 
we'll just do the first one of this so you can can you see the little hole right there it shows up a little better against my darker shirt doesn't it so push that thread through and there we go that's the uh, heddle threading as seen with you at the back of the loom and me at the front um, we'll show you more of this project when I get a little bit farther on well gang I'm down to the last little bit of threading the heddles. We've got eight more to go, so two sets of the A block, which are on the first four shafts of the loom. And that was probably a mistake. I mean, it's not a, isn't going to prevent anything from working. Just that I needed more of the B block heddles than the A, and I've got more heddles on the front shafts than on the back, so I probably would have been better off to go the other way, but doesn't matter because I've got enough on the on here to do what I need. So I'm just threading off these last eight heddles. And then we'll be ready to start slaying the reed. I hope. I think my shoulder was probably in the way. Let's see if that... One, two, three, yep. Here we go, last heddle. And one final thread. That'll be the floating salvage. Comb this out. Put a quick slip knot into it. And threading the heddles is done. <coughs> so there we go, let's move a few things around, put the beater bar back onto the loom so I can uh, start slaying the reed. Okay, we'll get the uh, beater bar mechanism back on. Get it down to go into its right position over there. There, set it back down there. When I'm slaying the reed, I don't want it to travel quite as far, so I just put a little something on so it can only travel a short way. There you go, that's on. Now I can start slaying the reed. Okay, I realize you won't be able to see everything I'm doing behind the reed, but reaching back and grabbing the first slip knot and undoing it, and I'm going to grab the first two threads, well, I'm going to grab the first one thread, I'm going to grab the floating selvage and put it through the reed all by itself, and then the next two threads, one, pull them through from now on I'm going through um, 
two threads per dent in the reed. Grab the next two. This is almost as putsy as threading the heddles, but it is a test that's got to be done. It actually, it's a little faster than threading the heddles, but one, two. And of course, you can see I've got my handy dandy, my favorite. Uh, Fix the light. There we go. First one done, we'll just tie another little knot so they don't come out again. And I'll keep going. Okay, YouTubers. I guess you can kind of tell what I'm doing. I've got you at a different angle than usual, but I'm uh, lashing the warp onto the front. I know a lot of people prefer to tie it on. Um, I understand that. Personally, I have a hard time getting my tension even when I tie. So, putting it on with um, lashing allows me to adjust it a little bit easier. And I find when you tie it on, you've got a, you got a lot of extra warp just hanging down here behind where you tie it on. And to me, that's a waste of about a foot worth of warp. So I find that by doing it this way I have less loom waste and I can make adjustments. I know other people who disagree with this method completely. That's fine. Teach their own. But this is how I like to do it. So I've got um, each of the lashing groups here is basically an inch worth of threads. So at 24 EPI, it's 24 threads. Except for the very last one. I need a little bit extra, so those are 14 each. The last two, I think I did that way. basically opening up the bundle of threads at about the middle, so um, 12 threads on each side. Okay, there's the 
the last one. I don't have to worry if these are exactly the same tension yet. I can do that after I get it all tied on, then I'll adjust. So I'm just going to take a couple extra wraps down here and tie it off. That should do it. Okay, now what we do is just tighten it up a little bit and feel. And actually, they feel pretty decent. Let's tighten it up a little bit more. Is a little tighter on the edges than in the middle here, so we just adjust it a little bit. I think we've got it. So there we are. That's tied on to the front. Now I gotta go underneath and tie up the treadles. That's a real pain in my shoulder. Um, just laying on the floor like that. So I'm not gonna show you that part of it. Okay gang, I think that's enough for this video. It's pretty long already. So I'm gonna stop here and this left to be a two-part project on YouTube. It, it's a multi-day project for me already, I think. See, today's Tuesday and I started... Did I start measuring out my warp on Friday or was it Saturday morning? I can't remember. So it was either Friday or Saturday and today's Tuesday. So, get an idea uh, how this is going to be. So. The next video will come out um, whenever I get farther along in the project. Until then, bye-bye.